Hello, this is Mr. Reinhardt, and today we're going to start learning about Oceania. So what is Oceania? Well, here we are in the United States, there's Texas, and we live here where this uh, little road kind of pokes out of Interstate 35. But if we scoot over, we will find the state of Hawaii, of course. And Hawaii uh, is you know, further south than Texas, right? Um, it's in the middle of the ocean. But if you zoom out, okay, that's the Pacific Ocean. Hawaii is pretty much right there in the middle. But most of Oceania ends with Hawaii, okay? So Polynesia, Micronesia, Melanesia, these are terms that are in your book. But they all refer to these different islands that as you zoom in, you start to see more and more of these. It also connects to Papua New Guinea. This is the island of New Guinea. And there are all these other islands over here. And then even all the way down to New Zealand, okay? And the person who explored all this area is named Captain Cook. He's a famous explorer from the United Kingdom. And uh, he explored, he got on a boat and left from the UK and took his boat all the way down here, stopped in Brazil, then took the boat all the way down here through the southern part of South America and then all over in the uh, the Pacific Islands went to Hawaii and other places, went to New Zealand, and then eventually we have he went to Australia, went back through here, and then eventually went all the way back to England in a, in a trip around the world, okay? So does anyone in here know what you call when a, when a boat goes all the way around the world? So when somebody takes a boat trip all the way around the world, in fact, I guess you could do it in an airplane too, it's called circumnavigation, okay? So uh, Captain Cook circumnavigated the world at least three times. Watch the video about Captain Cook. And then what I want you guys to do is think of one question that you have about Oceania or about how Captain Cook did this, okay? Think of one question you wanna ask. <laughs> While the French were uniting around their new national map, the British, with their expanding overseas empire, were charting the oceans. James Cook was one of Britain's pioneering explorers and navigators. In August 1768, he embarked on an epic voyage bound for the Pacific. The latest scientific inventions gave Cook's maps a new kind of authority and the power to lay claim to the territory they depicted. Cook's mastery of science and navigation confirmed him as a great hero and genius of the Age of Enlightenment. But on the island of Tahiti, Cook met his match in a local navigator called Topaya, who'd never even drawn a map in his life. Tapaya could sail across the Pacific, a third of the Earth's surface, without the use of paper maps. This went against all Cook's training and experience. He was so intrigued that he asked Tapaya to draw a chart of the ocean, showing the location of all the islands that he knew. This is a copy of the map Cook encouraged Tapaya to create. The sheer scale of Tapaya's knowledge shown on this map is absolutely astonishing. 74 islands, half of which weren't actually even mapped by the Westerners, but here they are being shown by Tapaya. Cook wrote in his journal that Tapaya knew more of the geography of the islands situated in these seas than anyone he'd ever met. He said that any ship would be better off with Tapaya aboard. Tahihari Pariente is one of Tapaya's descendants. A Polynesian navigator himself, he studied the techniques used by his ancestors. Well, the navigator had knowledge of the stars, he had knowledge about climate, he had knowledge about how the time would go by in a year, so the difference between seasons. I mean, there is no Polynesian culture with, without navigation. We're islanders, so we, we hop from islands to islands. 
for 3,000 years, the Polynesians had been exploring and colonizing the islands of the Pacific. They'd even reached America at least a century before Columbus. Tapia was drawing on ancestral knowledge passed down through countless generations. When you get out from an island, until it disappears behind the horizon, you use the island as a bearing. So then you start using the stars. But then you don't have stars all the time. You have clouds, you have rain. And you use the wave patterns in the ocean. Then you pull out the certain fish. Mm -hmm. They know this fish only comes that far away from the islands or that kind of birds. They know how far away they can fly. So you have to understand what's around you. When Tapia drew his map, he was encouraged to place his knowledge within a Western framework. But on closer inspection, it reveals a Polynesian perspective. Even the way of indicating direction is different. All the Western maps here are north, south. The one thing you see on every map is north. Mm. We, we didn't really care about the north. We only care about is west because that's where everything goes. That's where the sun goes down. That's where the stars goes down. That's where the wind blows. And if we look at this map, what's particularly significant about it? The scale, for example, on the map is uh, uh, not related maybe to the distance on the real scale of the geographic place, but maybe related to the importance of the place. Like Rotuma is, is drawn really big, but it does echo in a lot of legends and myths and stories. So it is big in history not in, in width or height. It's, it's like a, a code. If you don't have the key, you won't understand the message. Despite the great scientific leaps forward in the West, Tapia's map shows us that other cultures had different but equally effective ways of navigating their way across the Earth's surface. Okay, so you all have your questions now. And what you need to do is there is a uh, questionnaire in Schoology, you need to put that question that you have about Oceania in that, and then we'll discuss it next week. All right, so the next thing I want you guys to really learn is how volcanoes form islands. So there's this other video about that. How volcanoes form islands. High islands have steep slopes that rise from the shore. These islands are home to diverse plant and animal life. These islands are generally humid and rainy, with rainforests and freshwater streams and rivers. The Hawaiian islands are examples of high islands. Ooh. High islands begin as underwater volcanoes. As the underwater volcanoes erupt, lava flows into the ocean water and cools. Over time, the volcano continues to erupt, and the volcanic rock continues to build up. As the buildup of a volcanic rock increases, the volcano rises above the surface of the ocean. Over time, the movement of the tectonic plate will carry the volcano away from the source of magma and lava. Meanwhile, that same source of magma and lava will continue to create new volcanoes. Mm. A chain of volcanic islands will be created with the oldest island the farthest from the source of magma and lava. Okay, so that's the important part. That's what I, one of the concepts that you need to try to grasp. Basically the hot spot of the, of the volcano that the magma is released from stays in one place, but the tectonic plates above it move, all right? So the mount, the volcano is there, but the whole time the plate is moving in, a, in one direction. And so in a way, the, the island will kind of be stretched over the time that it's created. Sometimes maybe the volcano will stop for some reason. Sometimes maybe the tectonic plate will move faster or slower. And so as a result of that, you have these gaps where the volcano has to form a new island and it takes so long to make the new island that maybe in that process it's moved along and so the, it forms another island that's actually separated from the other one. Yes? Is that why Hawaii is near a volcano? 
so yeah, so that's an interesting thing about Hawaii. And I'll show you that now. So if we look at Hawaii, and it's, a, it's the perfect example of this because it's really easy to see the line of islands, okay? But there are super tiny islands that continue to follow up here. Hawaii is actually the widest state. It's over a thousand miles wide. But it's not the biggest state. That's true. <clears throat> okay, so this island, the island of Hawaii is obviously the biggest island of the main islands. And uh, the thing about that is that not because the tectonic plates have stopped or anything like that, but it's, it's the spot where the Volcanoes National Park is, where the volcanoes still erupt um, sometimes. I think recently it stopped, but for mm, about 20 or 30 years, it was erupting constantly. Um, so obviously the volcanoes are still here, but none of these other places are going to have volcanoes. They're all gone. You know why? I already told you. Yeah, the tectonic plate has, has, has moved, okay? So what's going to happen to the islands that are not with the volcano, okay? There's no volcano under it anymore. What's going to happen to those islands? They won't have any more eruptions. That's correct. What's going to happen to the islands? Yeah. They're going to farther and farther away from the They're going to keep going further away from the, from the volcano. What else? So the islands will get smaller. They will continue to get smaller because of the waves. The waves wash in and they, they wash away the rocks. Okay, and so here is your assignment. So what you need to do is answer these on paper if you don't have a device and then make sure you bring that paper with you to class on Monday. Or if you do have access to Schoology, you can do it in there as well. It doesn't matter. Uh, but we will talk about the questions and go over them on Monday. So firstly, like we mentioned, uh, write down the question that came to your mind while you were watching the video about Captain Cook and Polynesians and sailing around Oceania. Uh, number two, based on the second clip we watched about volcanoes, how do high islands begin? In other words, how do they form? Number three, what happens after the buildup of volcanic rock increases? So you might have to think a little bit about this. This is a little critical thinking. Number four, why do volcanic islands form in chains, or also we call them archipelagos, island chains or archipelagos? And number five, after a chain of volcanic islands forms, where can you find the oldest island? Okay, and you can use Hawaii as an example. Where would the oldest island of Hawaii be? In what direction, north, south, east, west, and why? Okay. So if you have any questions, please uh, go ahead and message your history teacher on Schoology or ask in class when you see them next time. All right. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.